The News Watch never stops. This is 1010 Wins at 92.3 FM. You give us 22 minutes, we'll give you the world. Good morning, 52 degrees at 840 on this Wednesday, September 27th. I'm Scott Stanford. Here's what's happening. New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez goes to court this morning facing arraignment on federal bribery charges. Donald Trump slapped hard by a judge in a civil suit saying the former president lied for years about his net worth to get better deals and bank loans. Target says it can't handle the losses from all the theft in their stores, so several locations need to close, including in East Harlem. Hundreds of Farmingdale residents turn out to the wake of a 47-year-old high school marching band leader who died in last week's bus crash. An American astronaut's on his way back to Earth along with the two cosmonauts as they say Arrivederci to the intercontinental, uh, how about international? Let's go with that one, International Space Station. Checking sports, Yanks win. Lousy field conditions at City Field equals a double header for the Mets and Marlins today. Jets bring in quarterback Trevor Simeon to the practice squad. AccuWeather, we finally get a little sunshine today. Good one, high around 67. Wins news time, 841, traffic and transit on the ones. How good is it out on those roads, Karen Stewart? It depends where you are, of course. Isn't life like that? The eastbound Bell Parkway is not the place to be right now. If you are, I'm sorry about that. Near Springfield Boulevard, we have an unauthorized tractor trailer. He shouldn't have been on the parkway, and what he did was slam into the overpass there. The right and center lanes are blocked, and there's concrete dust all over the roadway. Now, the delays are jammed, but they only go back to Cross Bay Boulevard. They don't go any further than that, and we do have rubbernecking in the westbound direction. Brooklyn's inbound Gowanus Expressway is jammed from the uh, bridge, the Verrazano, up into Atlantic Avenue, and westbound, we're extremely heavy from Queens Boulevard down into Flushing Avenue. The inbound Queens Midtown Tunnel, as we check what you need to know about the bridges and tunnels, is packed from Maurice Avenue in Maspeth. The 59th Street Bridge is really heavy. Uh, kind of equal from Queens Boulevard or Northern Boulevard inbound right now. And over at the Hudson River, as we check the numbers there, it's 45 to 50. Inbound Holland, Lincoln, and the George. Still 20-minute delays on NJ Transit trains in Penn Station because of earlier Amtrak issues. That should start to uh, collect and become back to normal pretty soon. We'll keep you posted. An alternate side of the street is in effect today. Our next report's 851. I'm Karen Stewart, 1010 Winds on 92.3 FM. Well, more political colleagues of New Jersey Senator Bob Menendez calling for him to step down in the wake of these federal bribery charges. Big court hearing this morning. Well, the pressure is certainly mounting here, not from Republicans, but from Democrats as well. More than two dozen Senate Dems now urging Menendez to step down, including his longtime colleague and friend, Cory Booker. The 69-year-old Menendez saying he's not going anywhere, proclaiming his innocence while he spoke on Monday from Union City. On Friday, the Southern District of New York brought charges against me. I understand how deeply concerning this can be. However, the allegations leveled against me are just that. So now, the court appearance. Menendez and his wife, Nadine, coming here before Judge Sidney Stein this morning. The feds are saying Menendez and Nadine engaged in what they're calling a corrupt relationship with three Jersey businessmen and took hundreds of thousands in bribes in the form of gold bars and cash. Two of those businessmen charged, Jose Uribe and Fred Davies, will also be arraigned in the same court building today. Glenn Shock 1010 wins, 92.3 FM, Pearl Street, Lower Manhattan. Well, Donald Trump has come out on the looting end of one of the legal cases against him. It's the one filed here in New York, accusing Mr. Trump of defrauding banks and insurers while building his business empire. The judge agreeing with New York Attorney General Letitia James, Trump overstated his net worth by as much as $2.2 billion, duping banks, insurance companies, and other business partners into giving Trump, his eldest sons, and their family real estate business better terms than deserved. It's correspondent Aaron Katursky. As you might expect, Trump is, of course, lashing out at the ruling. The GOP presidential frontrunner attacked the decision as political, claiming his civil rights have been violated. Next, the judge will decide how much Trump will pay in penalties at trial starting October 2nd. The attorney general asking for at least $250 million, saying we look forward to presenting the rest of our case. It's correspondent M. Wynn, an attorney for Trump, is calling a decision completely disconnected from the facts and governing law and says they will appeal. Wynn's News Time 844. If you live in East Harlem, you're soon going to have to go a little further to go shopping at a Target. The store at East River Plaza is on the list of several Target locations that are going to be closed permanently because of concerns about shoplifting and other crime. 
These shoppers tell NBC4 they aren't surprised to hear the news. It's really gotten out of hand. I've seen people go in and come out with comforters, and not one comforter, but several comforters, and no one stops them. It is just merchandise, and like we're people, and we live here, and this is our community, so it is kind of like sad that they're prioritizing merchandise over like actual community. But you got to tell everybody they, they need to pay on, on the way out. Target says it's closed nine stores across the U.S., but the one in East Harlem is the only one on the East Coast. And it's not just Target having some trouble with crime. There are several stores in Philadelphia's Center City neighborhood, including Lululemon, Foot Locker, Apple Store, all hit by a crowd of looters yesterday. Philly Police Deputy Commissioner John Stanford Jr. says it appears a caravan of vehicles was headed from location to location. At this point in time, we know somewhere around 15 to 20 arrests um, have taken place thus far. Um, at least two firearms have been recovered. The looting came on the same day that a judge dismissed charges against a former Philadelphia police officer in a deadly shooting during a traffic stop. But Stanford says the looting was not related to the peaceful protests against that decision. Winds news time 846. We're at 52 degrees, headed up to 67 today. Nice day on the way. A gruesome find in Brooklyn. A passerby stumbled upon a woman's body yesterday morning in the southeast corner of Prospect Park. Police say it appears that the woman who had lived in a homeless encampment in the area was the victim of blunt force trauma to the head and had been stabbed a number of times. A knife was recovered near the scene, but no arrests have been made. A funeral mass will be held today at a church in Farmingdale for Beatrice Ferrari. She's a retired history teacher and longtime band chaperone who was killed last week when the bus on the way to Van Camp in Pennsylvania crashed on a highway in upstate Orange County. Yesterday, a line of mourners outside the Massapequa Funeral Home for the wake of Farmingdale High School band director Gina Pelletieri, who was also killed in the crash. Tomorrow, the school will be closed so students, teachers, and others can attend her funeral. Well, there's been another arrest in the case of a one-year-old boy who died of fentanyl exposure at a daycare in the Bronx. The husband of the Bronx daycare owner was taken into custody on a bus in Sinaloa, Mexico, after a manhunt that lasted more than a week. Prosecutors say Felix Herrera Garcia was seen leaving the daycare on surveillance video, carrying two shopping bags after being tipped off by his wife, Gray Mendez, that police were on the way. Authorities say she called Garcia before calling 911 to report four of the children in her care were unresponsive. All of that happened while the children, the babies, were suffering from the effects of fentanyl poisoning and in desperate need of help. Correspondent Jerika Duncan. Investigators say the fentanyl was being stored in an area not far from the mats where the children would take their naps. Hey, locking your car doors, it's always a good idea, right? But it's an especially smart move in southwestern Connecticut where there's been a, a whole string of thefts lately. Easy pickings in Fairfield County. Car thieves are having a field day finding vehicles unlocked with the key fobs inside. There's been a rash of stolen cars in the region, Wilton, Weston, and Westport, to name a few. Westport police recently tracked down a 16-year-old who allegedly carjacked an Aston Martin from a garage. Police Chief Fody calls Keenis. Most of our stolen cars are recovered within 20 four to 48 hours and they're either taken for joy rides or we know they're often used to commit other crimes this car and the other cars that were recovered were actually taken to what we would call back a few decades ago a chop shop in wilton a garage door opener in an unlocked car allowed thieves to steal another vehicle criminals are also grabbing valuables from cars in parking lots and during daycare drop-off when parents are preoccupied sean adams 1010 wins on 92.3 fm in wilton advocates and elected officials are calling for the enactment of the so-called LLC Transparency Act. This aims at stopping anonymous ownership of limited liability companies. One of the act sponsors in Albany, State Assemblywoman Emily Geiger, spoke to 1010 Wins. If you're not willing to put your name next to your purchase in the state's documents, that's a problem. And that's such a problem that it has put us at dead end after dead end in major white collar crimes. Recent data says 37% of the properties in Manhattan have anonymous landlords. That's about five times the national average. The longest space flight in U.S. history ended today when NASA's Soyuz spacecraft undocked from the International Space Station.
Undocking confirmed. Physical separation confirmed. American astronaut Frank Rubio and his two Russian crewmates were in orbit for 371 days. Wins news time 850. Jets fans, do we have a new quarterback? A backup? Maybe? Someone going to play for Zach Wilson on Sunday? I doubt it. We'll check sports and we check the roads when we come back. One minute. As a roofer, I'm always on the go. So I need to be able to get things done from anywhere. All right, guys. Thank you so much for joining me on this driving in the news snippet of New York metropolitan area local news. We'll see you on the next video.